Hey, I hope part one of the complete hair type series was enough to help you know for sure what your curl pattern is. In this video, we're going to move on and talk about your hair texture. As we continue down the complete hair type chart, you'll start to see the whole picture of what makes your hair your hair. As it pertains to natural hair, texture refers to how loose or tight your curl pattern is. So each curl pattern can be loose, tight, or somewhere in the middle. It's a measure of your shrinkage. Let's refer back to the chemical and physical bonds in your hair that I talked about in the last video. How much your hair naturally shrinks is determined by the strong chemical disulfide bonds in your hair. Disulfide bonds gives your hair structure and strength. For natural hair, our disulfide bonds are unevenly distributed. So areas where there are more will create a curl or a bend in your hair. The tightness and distribution of these bonds determines how much shrinkage and structure your hair has. This explains a little more why we are able to create all types of gravity-defined shapes with our hair. Weaker, more physical bonds in our hair, like hydrogen bonds, also play a role with shrinkage. Let's say you formed a mold by straightening your hair and you go outside on a humid day. If you zoom in, you'll see the extra moisture or H2O in the air absorb into your hair and detach the hydrogen bonds. As they reattach, they pull your hair up into itself, which some refer to as frizz, but us naturals call it shrinkage. Testing your hair texture is not an exact science. It's as easy as observing your hair. Here's a quick look at a close-up of mine. I'm definitely on the tighter end of the spectrum. A clear way to tell if your texture is tight is when your shed hair strands curl back up into itself. And of course, we have different textures on different sections of our hair. The back of my head has the tightest texture. Notice how the shed hairs from this section naturally bunch up into a ball. It's also really difficult to separate them without causing tangles. The middle of my head is my loosest texture. Notice how it doesn't really curl back into itself as much, and it's easier to separate. And the front section of my hair is somewhere in the middle. Here are some examples of other textures. People on the tight end can have up to 90% shrinkage. Yep, that means that their stretched hair is up to 90% longer than their shrunken hair. Whether stretched or in a shrunken state, this hair type loves, loves, loves to be put into a mold and left alone. I'll talk more about molds in more detail in a future video. Here are some examples of hair types on the looser end. Here's where you tend to see a lot of the eye curl pattern types but there are also S, O, and L hair types that have looser textures as well. And here are some examples that fit somewhere in the middle of the line. The middle area of the texture line can be a little confusing and hard to determine, so I included percentages to give you a little more insight and help you out a little. So do you have a better idea now where yours is? Share it below. Overall, I would say I have about 75% shrinkage. So if I'm asked, I just say tight. Just like with your curl pattern, changing your hair texture can be done in two ways. Either permanently by breaking the strong disulfide bonds in your hair with relaxers, baking soda, hair dyes, or heat damage, just to name a few or temporarily through heat or heatless stretching. Earlier in this video, I mentioned that tight textured hair loves to form molds and be left alone. There are all types of ways to form a mold. There's braids, twists, locks, or afros, just to name a few. A mold can even be formed on stretched hair, but in this case, we're talking about forming a mold on shrunken hair. Let me elaborate a little more about this. Shrinkage is a sign of strength and health. It's how we know that our hair is still healthy and not damaged. 
Embracing and caring for your hair in a shrunken state is simple. While these styles are beautiful, tight textured hair really does not like to be over manipulated. Don't get me wrong, it's okay to elaborately style your hair from time to time. But just keep in mind, the more often or the more elaborate the style is, the more damage and tension you're inflicting on your hair and scalp. At most, tightly textured hair performs its best when it's styled no more than once a week and does even better if it's less than that. Personally, I touch my hair once a week when I scoop and spread, and at most, wash, treat, and blow out my hair once a month or so. Every year, I also try to carve out like three months or so where I put my hair into braids. I'll be posting a detailed video on my braid regimen soon, so stay tuned. Another important tip is to try to overcome the urge to over detangle your hair. Our hair grows like a vine. So unless you're stretching your hair, not even five minutes after detangling it, it's gonna tangle up again. Tangles are just part of our hair type and should be embraced to a certain extent. So rather than detangling your hair every day, detangle it once a week maybe. Or rather than detangling with a comb, gently detangle with your fingers instead through scooping and spreading. I personally don't use brushes or combs in my hair anymore. It will shock you just how manageable your hair is when you're gentler with it and just let it be. Molds come in all shapes and sizes. They are as unique as you. Natural hair really does have a mind of its own. It's alive in so many ways. Over time, as you and your hair mature and get to know each other better, it'll start to frame and complement your face in a really unique way and become part of your style. The next video in this complete hair type series will be on density, what it means, how to test your hair, what are things that cause your hair to become sparse, and real solutions on how to increase your hair's density. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.